Good morning, church. Good to see you this morning. He is risen. He is risen indeed. So we're going to wait just a few minutes. I've heard on some of the comments later on, it takes a little bit to find us on Facebook. It takes a moment to log on and, and all of those things. So I'm just going to take a couple of moments, give folks some time to connect and click and get in. Some folks have said they get partway in. So we leave a little bit of lag room this morning. Uh, but just a couple of things I have to say. I'm really thankful for all of you uh, who tune in, who've been calling in, who uh, text and sent emails and uh, have come by to pick up your elements. So that's actually one of the announcements. If, uh, if you would like to get your elements for communion, we'll be having communion today. We have these little cups. Um, so no one else in my family had this problem, but I had plenty of problems trying to get the wafer open. So you might want to pre-open the wafer a little bit so you can get in there. But have that ready to go. If you didn't weren't able to pick these up, if you would grab um, a cracker and some juice and be ready to go for communion, we'll have that uh, almost towards the end. Uh, also, in just a moment, we're going to be singing together uh, a great hymn of the church. Uh, for Easter morning. I was talking to my kids, and they're like, Dad, that sounds like a Christmas carol. And it's, well, it kind of is. It's an Easter carol. So it's open domain. We can sing it on live, on uh, live on stream, or wherever, really, because uh, it doesn't have a copyright. So we can sing it together, and we will sing that in just a moment. Um, and I wanted to just thank you again for uh, caring for one another, caring for your church, for the members in the church, talking to one another, and texting one another. That's really a big deal. Uh, for those of you who have uh, been faithful in giving, thank you very much. This is, uh, this is an interesting time that we find ourselves. So to continue to give, whether stopping by the church and dropping it in the, the little metal container or going online or the app or uh, however it is you found yourself able to give, it is greatly appreciated. So thank you all very much. So I am, uh, I think it's about time. We've given a little bit of lag so that we can get in. So one more time. He is risen. He is risen indeed. So would you grab the song? It was in the email today. It came through the MailChimp email. So if you scroll into your email, there's a PDF in there and you can see the music. We're also going to put the words up behind me. And I'm going to step to the side because... I feel like it's weird to sing into the camera. So I'm going to step over there so you can see the words live. Christ the Lord is risen today. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Sons of men and angels say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high. Alleluia. Sing ye heavens and earth reply. Alleluia. Lives again a glorious King. Alleluia. Where O oh, death is now thy sting. Alleluia. Dying ones he all of save. Alleluia. Where thy victory O oh, grave. Alleluia. Love's redeeming work is done. Alleluia. Fought the fight, the battle won. Alleluia. Death in vain forbids him rise. Alleluia. Christ hath opened paradise. Alleluia. Soar we now where Christ has led. Alleluia. Follow. Our exalted head, Alleluia. Made like him, like him we rise. 
today. So congratulations. Um, today I want to talk a little bit about gathering together. So whether we're gathering together at church, whether we're gathering together uh, in our homes, as families, wherever we are as the church, I want to talk about gathering together because this is a big part of being the church. So gathering together as, as families in particular uh, for us who are closed in together is actually very normal for the church. The early church gathered together in homes. They gathered together in catacombs. They weren't able to have large churches to gather together. So really, in the book of Acts and later on, there wasn't a large church building, even one with maybe a baptismal, until the third century. So... Although this may feel a little odd for a lot of us to gather together and to celebrate Easter with just a few of us uh, in our home, it's actually pretty normal for us to get together and celebrate Easter as families. So it's a kind of a big deal, eating together, celebrating church together. We're going to have communion together, singing together. It's actually what the church did for centuries. Today, uh, I thought about it, and I was looking up, and particularly for families and families with younger children, I don't know if you're watching today, but to gather together as a family really has a lot of benefits, particularly to gather together as a family and eat together. Maybe one of those things that maybe it's passe, maybe it's kind of gone out of style, but doing a little bit of research and talking about gathering together as families, we have um, a whole bunch of things that are really good for parents and children and even grandparents and nieces and nephews to gather together on a regular basis to eat together. In fact, research shows that if families eat together between five and seven times a week, they have the children get higher grades in school across the board. They have a lower rate of addiction, so keeping drugs out of the family and alcoholism uh, is lowered by families eating together. Kids and family members are more likely to be able to fight depression. So for all of you who are out there, and, and now I guess I can speak to Marines uh, and, and those of us who are in the military. I want to encourage you, don't eat by yourself. Find places to, and people to go and eat with and eat with people across the table for one another. It helps push off depression. It also fights obesity. So, hey, there you go. For all of us who are together, uh, if we eat together across the table from one another, it fights the bulge. So, eat together, eat with your family. I think it's mostly just because um, well, we eat better and we eat healthier. I was talking with my family just this week about um, being on your device, whether it's on a laptop or on a, on a tablet or on your phone, that to encourage one another and actually to let one another know that you're really important, it's good to have your phone out of your hands. So you put your phone in your pocket if you're going to talk to someone. You're going to let them know that you value them at dinner or when you're out to eat, and for those of you who might be dating, to not have your phone on the table, to not have your phone anywhere where you can see it, engages with the person who is across from you. So uh, although I told my children this, and I was teaching them about it, and trying to engage as a family together around the table, what ended up happening this week is I came to the table and set my phone on the table as we were eating, and of course, I got a text, and then another text, and another text, and uh, my children just very thoughtfully looked at me and said, Dad, I thought we weren't bringing the phone to the table. And I was like, yep, you are 
Right. So parents, I guess this is the encouragement. You don't have to be perfect, but um, if they call you on it, get rid of the phone and put it somewhere else. So a little bit of encouragement of, for us coming together as the people of God and coming together as families and being shut in our homes. What do we do? How do we do this? Well, the good news is today, well, it is Easter, but a part of the good news is in Scripture, God has many times where people gather together in homes and he does a great work while they are gathered together, usually eating together and talking together. And God even gives instructions to his people together. So if you would, turn with me to Exodus chapter 12, verses 5 through 8, and then verse 13. Exodus chapter 12, verse 5. Oh, my family, okay, so my family is helping me out. Uh, they're saying I should probably pray. We sang a song, so I guess I forgot to pray. So let's, let's pray before we go into the Word. Lord, thank you today that you are the risen Christ, that you are our Savior, the one that we put our hope in, that our lives are centered around you, our thoughts, our attitudes, who we are, Lord, we want to be your servants. Thank you for your sacrifice and the power to be risen from the grave to show us what it means to live, to be our deliverer and our healer. Lord, today we give you praise. Speak to us today as we get into the scriptures. Holy Spirit, be in our midst. Bring peace and comfort as we seek you today. We pray this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. It's always good to have backup waving at you and giving you hand signs. They were good hand signs, don't worry, but have hand signs. So Exodus chapter 12, verse 5 through 8, and then 13. It's Moses telling the people what to do when it is the time of the Passover. Well, the animal you select must be a one-year-old male, either a sheep or a goat with no defect. Take special care of this chosen animal until the evening of the 14th day of the first month. Then the whole assembly of the community of Israel must slaughter their lamb or young goat at twilight. They are to take some of the blood and smear it on the sides and the top of the door frames of the houses where they eat the animal. That same night they must roast the meat over a fire and eat it along with bitter salad greens and bread made without yeast. Verse 13. But the blood on your doorposts will serve as a sign marking the houses you are staying. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. This plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. So I thought coming together for Easter, it, be able to talk about the Passover. The Passover is a really big part of our celebration of Easter. Jesus is the Passover lamb. It is his blood that now guards us forgives us and cleanses us of our sin. It is a type. It is a reflection of what happens here in chapter 12, where the family gathers together. They, they celebrate the Passover, that God is sending a death angel into Egypt, and that death angel is going to kill the firstborn of the animals and of the Egyptians. And if the blood is on the doorposts of the houses, the angel will pass over the house and not take the life of anyone in the house. Today, as Christians, as those of us who meet together, it is in the blood of Christ that we meet. It is in the blood of Christ that we are forgiven. It passes over us. It, that shed blood cleanses us of our sin. So as we look, this was a meal that they ate together. It was something that they celebrate. In fact, Jews... To today, celebrate the Passover. If you look on your calendar, it's probably automatically on your calendar saying when Passover begins. It's a, it's a big deal. So that was avoiding the plague. I thought it was a little uh, apropos to talk about that because, I mean, really, that's what we're doing today. We are meeting like this today because we're avoiding the plague. Really, literally, we are avoiding the sickness and we're meeting together. So I'm, I'm hoping you're taking precautions, that you're taking this seriously, that you're washing your hands. Now we're supposed to be out and, and 
wearing masks when we go out into public and possibly even wearing gloves when you go down to the grocery store or wherever it is that you need to go. So I want to encourage you today to avoid the plague, quite literally. So for Israel, it's the Passover to stay in and have the blood on the doorposts. For us as Christians, it is the meeting together and celebrating the resurrected Christ. So let's move forward. If you move on to Luke chapter 22, Luke chapter 22, verses 14 through 20. Luke 22, verses 14 through 20. This is in the upper room. When the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. Jesus said, I've been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. And then he said, Take this and share it amongst yourselves, for I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. He took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Verse 20. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. Jesus gave really specific instructions when it came to celebrating the new covenant. Of course, here we find again the apostles and Jesus are gathered together in a room. They're sharing a meal together and Jesus gives specific instructions beforehand, where to go and what to do. And then when he meets with them, he tells them what it's for. That when you meet together, that you should share in communion. That you should share in the celebration of what others call the Eucharist. The directions for remembering what was about to happen. The eating of the bread signifies Christ's body that was broken. The wine is the new covenant. The blood isn't on the doorposts anymore. The wine is on our hearts. It is a, a symbol that we celebrate together. It's a symbol that in our lives, Christ's blood was shed to cover our sin. In the resurrected Christ, we celebrate as our King and our Lord who has conquered the death and sin that we find in this world. So what I want you to do is if you have this cup or if you have the cracker there with with you uh, go ahead and open up the top there's a clear plastic on the top you can take that clear clear plastic off and then you can access the wafer I'm going to encourage you not to take off the the foil first because well if you're like me you're really good at spilling things on yourself so hold that foil on the top and just take the bread so if you have the bread I'd like to celebrate the Lord's Supper together. So would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, today I thank you for your body that was broken for us. Lord, it was broken for our healing, for our healing mind, body, and spirit. Lord, that we would be renewed, that we would be restored because of who you are and your power over death and the grave. Lord, today we get to stand in your presence. We get to know you in your salvation. We get to celebrate being the healed people of God, mind, body, and spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your body that was broken for us. Let's take the bread and eat together this morning. And now, if you'll take the cup, carefully peel off that foil. Peel off the foil and you can set it aside. I'd like to celebrate the cup together. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, today we thank you for your blood that was shed for us. That blood that brings the new covenant, the new agreement between us and God, that we are no longer outsiders, that we are no longer sinful, trying to make up for our sin through sacrifice of animals. Today, Lord, it is your body, your blood, that was given for us, that new covenant that covers over our sins, 
that we are no longer outside, but we are on the inside. We are the children of God because we have come to you and we have repented. We have let you wash us clean and usher us into your family. Lord, today, thank you for your blood that was shed for us. Let's drink the cup together. So following in Christ's footsteps and in his instructions, we celebrate the Lord's Supper together. We celebrate the bread and the wine. So one more spot in scripture I want to take us to where Jesus, after the resurrection, shows up again. So would you turn with me to Luke chapter 24, Luke chapter 24, verse 35 through 48. It's a longer section, but I want to read the whole thing. Luke chapter 24, verse 35 through 48. Then the two from Emmaus told their story of how Jesus had appeared to them as they were walking around the, along the road and how they recognized him as he was taking the bread. And just as they were telling about it, Jesus himself was suddenly standing there among them and said, Peace be with you. But the whole group was startled and frightened, thinking they were seeing a ghost. Why are you frightened? he asked. Why are your hearts filled with doubt? Look at my hands. Look at my feet. You can see it's really me. Touch me and make sure that I am not a ghost. Because ghosts don't have bodies, as you see that I do. As he spoke, he showed them his hands and his feet. Still they stood there in disbelief, filled with joy and wonder. And then he asked them, Do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he ate it as they watched. Then he said, When I was with you before, I told you everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand scriptures, and he said, Yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die, rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all the nations, beginning in Jerusalem. There is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. You are witnesses of all of these things. The risen Christ appeared in the place where the disciples had gathered together. They had gathered together, and I imagine that they were probably pretty afraid. But listening to the story of the two men who met Jesus on the road to Emmaus, and then have Jesus appear in their midst as they were talking, as they were sharing the stories, is miraculous. It's really what we expect as the Church of God, is that when we meet together as the people of God, where two or three are gathered together, there he is also. That the Holy Spirit comes and communes with us, celebrates with us as we pray and gather together. So here, they're gathered together and Jesus appears. He shows up and shows them who he is. And then what does he do? He asks for something to eat. Again, there it is, that eating together. I know for us as the church, in fact, it's part of my plan going forward, and I said this last week, that when we do get to meet together again, physically and personally as the church, we're going to have a pretty big party. There's going to be a nice big banquet, and we're going to celebrate together. In fact, whenever I see in the scriptures these, these three things, this is what the church does, is we gather together, and we celebrate, and we eat together. So in your homes together, I want to encourage you to eat together, to sit across the table from one another and talk. When you gather together at church, take time to sit and talk. We, of course, make really good coffee so that you can sit and talk with one another. So there are tables and chairs to sit and celebrate and share with one another. That's what the church does. We worship, we celebrate, we meet together, we eat together. It's something that we share in common. And so what does Jesus say at the end of this passage? At the end of this passage, it's not just meeting together. It's not just seeing his hands and his feet. At this point, it is seeing the risen Christ. And the risen Christ 
comes into our midst. And what does he tell us? That we look into the scriptures and then he tells us for everyone who believes and repents of their sin. Today I want to encourage you. Maybe you haven't been in church before. Maybe you haven't been in church for a while. But one of your friends shared this with you on Facebook so you could see it. So today I want to encourage you to get into scriptures. I want to encourage you that if you have not been following Christ, today is the day of your salvation. Today is the day to repent of your sin. Repent of walking away from God and start walking towards Him. Letting Him be your Savior. Tell God you're sorry for your sin and that today is the day that you believe and you're going to follow. So today is to repent of your sin. To believe that Jesus is the Christ, that He died for your sin and rose again. And to follow Him. To do as He instructs. To get into the Scriptures. Find out who He is. To open your heart and your mind, your ears and your eyes to who Jesus is today. He is alive. He is risen. He is the king of creation. He is the king of our lives. And today we want to invite you to follow us as a church in following Jesus. Join us as a part. So if today you would like to follow Christ, today if you would like to follow Jesus, I want to invite you to pray with me. A prayer of salvation. It's a prayer that we often pray together as a church. It's something that reminds us of who we are and our commitment to Christ. So, if you would, pray with me. Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sin and rose from the dead. I turn from running my own life, and now I ask you to run my life for me. I invite you to come into my heart and into my life, I trust and I follow you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's in your name I pray. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, if that's the first time you've prayed that prayer, or the first time in a long time that you've prayed that prayer, um, I would like for you to private message me on the church, or if you want to, you can send an email. My email address at the church is first, F I R S T A G. So Apple Goat, A-G, 29, the numbers, Palms, P-A-L-M-S. So F-I-R-S-T-A-G, 29, P-A-L-M-S, at gmail.com. You can message me. You can send me an email. I would love to connect with you. I freely give out my cell phone number so that we can text and talk to one another. I would be glad to send that to you if you want to connect with me. So today, as we celebrate the Lord together, the risen Christ, I want to close our service with the Lord's Prayer. So if you would, join me as we close today together, uh, as we usually do when we celebrate the Lord's Supper with the Lord's Prayer. So would you join me this morning? Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. As, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So church, God bless you this morning. Thank you for sharing with us live on Facebook. And uh, we hope that this whole thing wraps up quickly so that we can meet together in person again. So God bless you. He is risen. He is risen indeed. God bless you. We'll see you in 10 minutes. And I will come back and I will read the kid's story. So we're going to leave the camera on so you can see it just for a little bit. We'll be back in 10 minutes to read the story of the three trees. God bless you.